For the past several months, I've been seeing a theme brought up by many commenters that New World is just a Throne and Liberty waiting room. And now that players have been able to see and play and talk about Throne and Liberty, what it all has to offer, well, things might just be changing. So hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name's Brian, if you're new around here. But if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, you sexy beast. And thanks for coming to this MMO discussion in which we're gonna be talking about the state of New World as it relates now that people are starting to see what is on the horizon. Now, this isn't me throwing shade at Throne of Liberty. That's not my style. I generally find the good in all things, which is a great way of pissing off a good portion of the internet. So if you don't like that, or maybe you just like to get oddly, strangely angry at me for my opinions, welcome in everybody. So while this video doesn't actually have a script, I'm just sitting down and sharing just my raw thoughts about how I'm feeling today. Honestly, I'm feeling really good about how New World is. The reason is, is because New World is unlike any other game that I've experienced within the MMORPG genre. And I think that's something that does tend to hold it back. There are the people, the players that are hype jumpers and there's nothing wrong with them. I'm not dogging on them. That's just who they are. But because of the nature of how they play these games, ultimately, it ends up all being the same thing. And to highlight this point directly, because we continue to fight the narrative that because New World had such a massive player population drop, that that's a sign of its quality, when that is the nature of the MMORPG. I do think Blue Protocol might have a different trajectory, but we'll talk about that over on Blue Protocol Central. But let me bring up this comment because it really does, I think, underscore what I've been preaching for a very, very long time. Dantos says, like every other MMO, it's going to have giant numbers up front from the nomadic majority. And when the current player numbers drop 80 to 90% after a month or so, hyping and memeing is where the entertainment is going to be for many people. This is what it is at this point. They're gonna try out uh, throwing a Liberty sure it's free to play probably gonna not end it up being for them but don't really much care uh, whether it's mobile design or not as long as it's done well whether it's Genshin Impact or any other kind of game out there it's really all about how you look at and how you play and how you progress well, obviously paraphrasing the last part of that but this is how it is and now what I think you're going to see not immediately mind you the PTR for season two goes up. I'm sure I'm going to have strong feelings and opinions of which you'll probably see those along with the notes tomorrow. So if you guys like new world content and you're watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed, and this is the video that gets you to do it, sound off in the comments. I'm going to let, welcome you uh, to the channel. Also be sure to hit that like button because it's a fun way of getting a wide range of opinions when these videos go a little bit beyond the scope of this channel and the typical content that I, I like to make. Amazon's all in on New World. And uh, the narrative is going to be the narrative until eventually there is just overwhelming evidence that that narrative isn't the reality. That reality is set based off of so many assumptions and opinions. We still have to sit down and kind of preach the facts about the game. And those are, for those of you who are new, content, communication, consistency, and it does help to have a hook. I think New World has a hook. It's an action MMORPG of which there are limited factors of that. It's also this beautiful, gorgeous open world. It's got the sound design. It's got, I think it has a lot going for it, but what it doesn't have and the critiques against it are completely valid. So it's gonna be interesting to see what it can learn from some of these other games, what it can learn from Throne of Liberty and Blue Protocol. What are the things that those games do well that could be adapted. I think those are all good conversations to have. Now you take those aspects, the devs just gave us the May update. They give us weekly uh, developer kind of a turnum updates, and that allows for the developer updates to be more impactful and more focused on what's to come. And there's also an expansion coming out later this year. And sure that will bring in hype, sure that numbers will go up, and sure the cycle will repeat, rinse and repeat over and over again until the memeing eventually just gets to be a point of absurdity if it hasn't already crossed that bridge already. So here we are today 
And so I ask you sincerely, whether you are using New World as a throne and liberty waiting room, whether you're on a break, breaks are good. They're healthy. You should be encouraged to check, check them out. It's weird and unfortunate that people use somebody taking a break as some sign of form of quality. And this isn't me saying that New World is perfect and it doesn't need lots of work. It doesn't need lots of content. It doesn't need lots of features. No, by no means. But this is me as the MMO player who's played multiple MMOs from all different time periods sitting down saying this is how it ends up being. It's this genre in and of itself where the people who proclaim to love it absolutely cheer on its destruction. And for me, the only thing that's changed over the last couple of years, the only thing that's truly interesting, whether it ends up being a success or not, only time will tell. But the thing that is truly interesting is that after years and years of gamers complaining they wanted something different and something new, they wanted more of these MMOs, but would never show up. It's always It was always a talking game, not an action game, right? It was always, yes, this is what I want. And then the thing came out, but then it was always, oh, but it's not truly what I want. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to go support it. So there's always been that dichotomy within this specific genre. But beyond that, we're now seeing investment in the MMOs. We're now seeing new MMOs. And they're all coming out with this either buy-to-play, free-to-play model, which does tend to frustrate the old guard. And I don't blame the old guard for being frustrated, but we're talking about how not just the genre itself has shifted, but gaming itself has shifted. Somebody was asking me the other day, why not subscription-based MMOs anymore? And I don't think that they're going to be a thing again. I will be surprised and would be like to be wrong if Ashes of Creation it manages to come out and maintain that as a thing. But we'll see. It's not out yet. It's not out for years from now. But Game Pass and PlayStation Plus and Netflix and all of these things, all these subscription services, I don't know if you're like me, are absolutely fatiguing in terms of continually paying for things that you don't have enough time to use in the first place. And MMOs are designed for time. That's the real currency. And so with barriers being removed from a subscription, whether it's buy to play something like new world or free to play something like throne of Liberty, that's going to open up these games for more people bringing in new faces and maybe even returning faces. And I think the numbers are going to be very, very fascinating and I can't wait to break them all down with you and talk about those in future videos. But anyway, I think new world is looking pretty dadgum good right now, uh, especially from all those who thought and would think and, and promote these MMOs to be something that they can never be. It's my biggest critique against all the other content creator analysts out there. They all compare these games to something that does not exist. Some utopia that is just in your mind, but when you come and that, but never can fit into the real world or reality or the, uh, the concept of markets and paying people what they're worth. And those are all things that we all have to deal with on a daily basis. Anyway, guys, thanks for your time today. Hopefully you enjoyed my off the cuff semi rant. And at the same time, very excited for the future of new world. We've got a lot uh, planned here for the channel. Hopefully you guys stick around. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video, but until then take care.